Welcome to Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, this is likely going to be the first part in a multi-part series, uh, depending on how I title it, you'll know before I do. Uh, but this is the J2. This is the unit I picked up the other day at the thrift store, and it kind of works. The cam is slipping, the crystal cartridge is, is blown out, so we're going to do a few things. We're going to try to do a complete service on it. We're going to take it apart. Uh, I'm going to try and put a new Chuo Denshi clone ceramic cartridge to replace the blown crystal one and then see if the drive wheels, the idler wheels, are salvageable or not. So I only kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> ought to make for an interesting video. Um, I have done research, but um, we'll see how it goes. And, you know, it's, I, I like to learn by doing. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to start by taking this out of the case. This is the newer version of the J2 uh, from what I've learned so far. Uh, but let's start by taking off the uh, housing. So it looks like there's a couple of screws, one right there and one right there as well. I'm going to need a long flathead, so I already don't have the right tool. I'm going to have to go grab that. No big deal. I don't think I have to take the feet off, although I might do that anyway. Just, yeah, I don't have to, but I can see underneath that one. There's nothing there, but I'll probably replace these with either silicone or felt. But, um, all right, let me go get that long flat head and we'll open her up, okay? All right, let's see what we can do. It already feels like the housing is a little bit loose, so. can definitely feel that loosening up even more. Yeah, these are really neat. You know, I had seen them, but I didn't know anything about it until I received those, or that uh, 45J from Peter, a.k.a. Fartamark. By the way, some of you have asked, what am I saying when I say that? F-A-R-D-E-M-A-R-K, Fartamark. And he's got two channels, Fartamark and Peter Landry. And just, you know, genius. I mean, to, build, to have the ability at such a young age to have thorough knowledge of how these things work, how these things work, how to talk, how to repeat, <laughs> you know, all the things that I can't do. Okay. Alrighty. So I learned a lot from him. But anyway, he knows all about these and... Uh, there's one of the screws right there. I, on the other hand, don't have the best track record for fixing and repairing things. Okay. Set this here. Now what I think, sometimes it's good to take these, I'm trying to feed the wiring through this opening. Now I wish I didn't have it knotted up like this. Gonna say sometimes it's good to keep the housing because you can use it to stop it up on. So like this, because we don't want to, you know, lay it down on that, we can kind of go like this to give us a little bit of working space without damaging things so much. Um, okay, let's have a look at what we've got here. Our drive wheels, idler wheels don't look that bad actually. Some, one of you guys told me that they're actually supposed to have a little bit of an indent, too, that, or on the one of these is supposed to have a little bit of an indent. This one also looks like it's in remarkably good condition. Okay. See that little dent there? I think that's supposed to be there. And as I rotate the uh, spindle manually, just by twisting in here, you can see the action you know, do its thing. Doesn't look half bad. I don't see any corrosion. I don't know what kind of metal this is, if this is like a magnesium or what, but it looks like it was a wise choice either way because it um, seems to really do the trick. Very, very interesting. Look at these little switches and contacts down here, relays. Depending on what position the tone arm is in. 
Really cool. Look at this. Isn't this just amazing? I'm just rotating the spindle. How this contact is made and pushed out of the way. And just like a fine clockwork. Way more mechanical than electrical. Yeah, I don't see anything the matter whatsoever. What I'm going to do is this. This may be a little simpler than I thought. I'm going to blast it with deoxid, which is always a good thing to do, I think. Then I'm going to treat the rubber. Um, it's on the hard side, but it's not brittle. You can kind of, you know, get your fingernail in there and you can feel it's got that rubbery, you know, texture to it. So I'm going to clean it with deoxid. I'm going to treat the uh, rubber wheels, the idler wheels, and then I'm going to focus on the tone arm. And we're going to take the tone arm off and we're going to replace that, or we're going to replace that cartridge there. So, all right, let me go ahead and uh, clean her off and then I'll be right back. Okay, this is after I've sprayed it thoroughly with deoxid. The wheels, I keep calling them the wheels, the idler wheels, are clean. And you could eat off this thing. It's really, really fun. So what we're going to do now is remove the tone arm so we can put the new cartridge on. And as you can see, it's got the bolt is right there. The older ones had it on the side, just a typical half inch bolt. So um, this newer style is going to require us to find the right size. I'm not 100% sure, but we're going to get it out of there and yeah, take a look at the wiring and go from there. Okay. So I think I found the right size. There we go. All right. So that will give us the leverage to uh, don't lose these washers and stuff. I'm going to try and just keep it upside down like that. That'll give us the opportunity to work on this cartridge. I'm going to try and do as little as possible in terms of undoing things. So... Yeah, let's take a closer look at that cartridge and getting that out of there. Okay, it's just super gummed up. I don't know what that is. Like if it's like a adhesive that's broken down, but oh man, it's super sticky. <laughs> Gross. I think I'm going to really enjoy having this uh, workbench. I've never really had a workbench. I've had to do my projects. I mean, I should say in this house. I've had to do them like on the kitchen counter. I haven't really built a um, workbench in the garage so I usually take over the kitchen with my projects so I think everybody's gonna be happy that I've you know put this together it's a piece of plywood <laughs> it's actually an interesting story behind why I ended up with this an extra piece of plywood okay that was relatively simple so there's two contacts and a ground wire oh it's so sticky so let me show you what I'm going to be replacing it with. But I just so happen to be in possession of a Chuo Denshi clone ceramic cartridge. There's no needle on that one. So yeah, so I think I have a couple of them. Do I? I think I did at one time. That's going on. Is that the right size? Yep. So this will be a, uh, this is a sapphire tip, but I mean, there you go. So the markings on this are um, right and left, plus and minus. And we got four posts and only two here. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that works. Um, I'm going to have to call in uh, a lifeline. Uh, so I do this right the first time. Then in terms of mounting it, I'm going to have to come up with with something to uh, mount it with there. But anyway, cool. We're making progress. Okay, doing a little research with uh, Chris Cuff's channel. By the way, I guess he passed away recently. That's awful. Um, what we need to do is bridge the top two, which will be the white wire, and bridge the bottom two, which will be the red wire. And then we can actually use part of this bracket here 
to remount it back into the hole. So let me do some of that work off camera and we'll see how it goes. I pulled off the uh, terminal connectors pretty easily. I'm gonna try and get this bracket off of here as well. This thing is so sticky. I mean, it's just like disgusting. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and, you know, get this clip off of here because apparently it's the perfect width for remounting those ceramic brackets. And uh, yeah, so again, I'll have to fiddle with this off camera, but that's what I'm working on. So as you can see, I've expertly removed this clip with no damage whatsoever. So yeah, I may have to reform this piece. It was riveted on there. So yeah, it's going well, it's going well. Look at this, Cinco. See that stamped in the inside there? Does it say Cinco? I think it says Cinco. Interesting. Company they use for the plastics? Not sure. Okay guys, and that is gonna do it for today. This is part one. I believe we can get this wrapped up in two parts. So come back tomorrow and we will see about finishing up this project, give it a test. I'm fairly confident that it's actually gonna work out fine. I just hope that the deoxit was enough to get the linkage working and the cam working appropriately. So I hope I don't have to tear it down any further than that. But anyway, that's gonna do it for now. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and we will see you tomorrow.